Aloha! This is Dr. Tiki, writing a prescription for tiki drinks, tattoos, and tech. What could be more fun? It's time for another Strange Love Live. This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. And as always, we've got two producers back behind the desk Morgan PDX and Dr. Normal. And this. Oh, you're going to talk. I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't know there would be talking this evening. Sorry. Haven't done this in a while. Hmm. I was going to introduce our guests. Would that be okay with you? Yeah? They say it's okay. This evening, we're here to talk about The Last Stand, which is a very cool web series. And we're here with Martin, Barbara, and Rachel Bennett. Hi, guys. Hey there. Hi. What is The Last Stand? The Last Stand is the best accident that I've had happen to me <laughs> in my life. <laughs> the best accident ever. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a complete accident how it happened. Uh, so before you tell us how that, mm-hmm. tell us what it is. Um, it is a zombie apocalypse web series. Mm-hmm. Um, it's filmed in Portland. It's not necessarily set in Portland. I've never defined its geographic regions in there, and mm-hmm. I really don't have any intention of doing that. But um, it is a po- post-apocalyptic. It's apocalyptic. Yeah. It doesn't matter where exactly. it happens. It could it's be somewhere. It's the, it's the ruins of whatever is left. And mm-hmm. um, the whole thing takes place after a viral outbreak, so I have a viral zombie story is what's going on with mm-hmm. it and i have a uh what started out as seven people boiled down to three now i've got four people so i've got four survivors that are making their way through this thing and right now they're on one story thread and we're learning things about their their past and and what's brought them to where they are but they're also trying to kind of find out some answers they may have some answers the they were trying to make their way to a safe haven, and the safe haven didn't work out, so now they're just... Like it doesn't when yeah. you're dealing with zombies and post-apocalyptic crap. Yeah, you have to have the, the dark night of the soul come mm-hmm. along at some point in time, so, yeah. All right, so now <laughs> tell us how it was next, and tell us how this... how this. What, what episode are we on? Um, we're about to launch episode five. Episode we, We've been able to launch uh, a new episode one a month. Mm-hmm. Um, so episode five comes out uh, the beginning of April. So mm-hmm. April first, we'll have our new one out. That's going to be our last episode for a little while. It's kind of as if we did uh, a season, but more along the lines of a series. And web series, they say like mm-hmm. series one. So series one will end with episode five, okay. and we'll pick it back up with with episode six of series two. Very cool. And how was it an accident? How did this happen? Um, so what had happened is, is I had a, a friend who was working for me last summer, and mm-hmm. she had an idea for a zombie comedy web series, and she'd never put pen to paper on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know what the premise of it was. She just, yeah, I have this idea bouncing around in my head, and I'd like to go find some spots to film. And we were filming other projects, and I said, you know what, I know a couple of great spots. Let's go look. And I went and took her to a building that's on the University of Portland campus. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine works there. So we're looking at this building. It's down on the waterfront. It's just completely burned out, graffiti. uh, Lots of bad stuff goes down there. Um, But it's just, it's fantastic. So while we're there, I called my friend and I said, hey, what are the possibility of us being able to film? And and she said, you've got 24 to 48 hours. We're going to bulldoze this thing because uh, they were having drug deals and people setting fires and skateboarders and, and people crashing in there and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They just they wanted the, the safety part. You know, taken, taken out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so she said, yeah, you've got 24 to 48 hours. That's it. And uh, so I ran back to where I was living at the time, and I used one hand to dial my friends and the other hand to just write a script. I just was writing stuff down. Yeah. And uh, the next day we were out there, about half my friends showed up with about half the gear. We killed a bunch of time waiting for other people to show that didn't. Um, people that the, the people that you see now that are the leads, the, the three people that are the survivors of episode one, 
uh, none of those people were actors. None of them were. They there were was friends. there was yeah. Uh, there was one guy who actually he had the part that he was supposed to have, but everybody else. None of them had parts, and none of them even knew they were going to act when they all showed up. They just thought they were going to be doing various other things or in the background. But they showed up. But they showed up, and because they were the ones that showed up, I just said, you're now this person, here's the script, you know, start looking at the lines. And they were looking at the lines minutes before they were going to try to give their, their lines. I, I actually I had the camera on my shoulder and the script in front of me, and I would feed them the line, and then I would film it, and I would feed them a line and film it. <laughs> You know, and um, I, that thing sat on a shelf for three months before it even got edited into anything. And and uh, I edited the piece and I threw it out on the web, and and my inbox was full. Next thing I knew, and yeah. so it people were asking when's the next one, and I thought, well, I I don't know when the next <laughs> one is. So you just filmed the first episode. Mm -hmm. You didn't film a bunch of it and edit it separately. No, mm -hmm. and and didn't didn't have anything else written. Mm -hmm. it, it 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 has a cliffhanger to it, and I just thought that would be more interesting. It was only going to be a couple minutes long anyway, and I just uh, decided I would kind of leave people guessing. Mm -hmm. I just thought it would be more fun. And where does Rachel come into this? Rachel comes into this. Um, so when I got everyone back together again, when this thing was kind of taken off, um, at the time, Rachel had hired me to uh, to be an editor for a short film competition. It was the 48-hour 48, 48 film oh, yeah. race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was doing that and, and needed an editor. So I was hired on to be the editor for her, which mm -hmm. just turned into a, a really great collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. um, she wrote and directed for that, and then she put a team together, and I edited, and we and we submitted something for that. Um, and in the process of that, I was starting to get things rolling for doing more stuff with The Last Stand, mm -hmm. and asked her if she wanted to be an assistant director. And she said she did. Which is good. And she's a script writer as well, So, and I'm not a script writer, so I can write my script and I can have my story content, and then I would hand it to her, and she would clean it up and give it continuity, and yeah. Right. So how was it when you came on board? Did you come on board, blah, blah, blah. Did you come on board for episode two? Um, I did. I actually uh, watched the first episode. Um, he had put it all together and put it up on, on the Internet, and by that time we had actually met. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw it, and I said, it, you know, it's great. I mean, it's... It's, I can see exactly where you're going with this story, and so um, that's when the conversation happened where, you know, are you interested in doing episode two? So episode two is actually when I started helping him, and mm -hmm. we've fit, completed all five of them now, mm -hmm. and we plan to do even more after we are finished with this so summer's project. So the fifth project. one is done and ready. Yeah, it's in the it's can. It's yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Waiting for April Fool's Day. That's right. It actually <laughs> has been shown. It had a, a public showing for Zombotica. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's the only time that one's seen the light of day. I rushed through that one to get it done for Zombotica. Right. <clears throat> so it's been it's been viewed once. Yep. Right. In and, public. In public. Mm -hmm. yep. And now it's just waiting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is season two going to... Uh, not, it's not season, it's a... Or a series, series yeah. It, it's we're, a... We're, 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 British. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too. And that's what a lot of people describe it as. It's yeah. very British in how it is. But uh, um, episode five is still going to be a hanger. I, I mm -hmm. Each episode, I, I try not to have it really end it. You know, yeah. you get a completion of a start, a part of a thread, but you get something that kind of takes you into the next story. So five is going to do the exact same thing. Five is mm -hmm. going to leave you hanging. We're, we're going to have what could feel like uh, i guess like they have a little bit of an answer that mm -hmm. they've gotten in in the story in this whole thread so um but they're 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 left in a really bad situation so um six is going to take up six is is going to be a, just a giant action episode episode three had a lot of action in it i was really happy to do that mm -hmm. to film an action sequences and do that so now that I've had a taste for it, I'm greedy for more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that more fun? It the is. Action is more fun. It is. It's you know because you're setting up all of your shots with everything you do. E everything should be very purposeful when you do this stuff, from where people are standing to how your shot is. You mm -hmm. block all of this, and I had so much fun constructing the action of three. So now I'm just kind of running wild with episode six. So. So what's going on? In the episode that we're watching. This is episode one, and mm -hmm. this is actually where um, our our first two characters have come along, and they're discussing the fact that 
They have a way across the river. They're trying to get across the river to a place called St. Teresa's, which they think is a safe zone. Mm -hmm. They have found a small boat, but not all seven people can fit in it. So they've agreed that if not everyone can fit, they're going to take care of the stragglers. And that decision was just made. So Aaron Sullivan is about to go and take care of the stragglers. And by take care of, he means off people. Oh yes, I'm just she's saying. she's about to shoot a uh, a woman who is taking care yeah, of a yes. child. Yeah, a mur- she's gonna murder. Yeah, yeah, we don't call it murder in uh, post apocalyptic <clears throat> times, but she's gonna off people. Yeah, she's going to be <laughs> freeing them of the baggage to which is slowing them down in their newfound world. <laughs> yeah. So, when did you start as a filmmaker? Um, I'm going to, let's see, I started probably in about, well, 2005, my, mm-hmm. I, my whole world kind of got shaken up in 2005. I used to work for the government as a, uh, fire ecologist doing wildland fire stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's where my degree is in natural resources. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't like it, quit, cashed in my retirement, went and lived in the Caribbean for six months, that? 14 years, 14 years. And you just said, eh, I don't like this anymore. Yeah. I need a change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was. I was fighting fires all summer long and, and doing prescribed burns, that kind of thing. So, okay. um, yeah, I went and lived in the Caribbean for a while and took a video camera with me and filmed a few things while I was down there. And when I came back, um, I filmed this completely silly little two-minute goofy thing, which, by the way, I found the other day. She hasn't oh, seen nice. this yet. Nice. I, fi- I filmed this completely stupid goofy thing with my Stormtrooper friends. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, and it's called CSI Empire. CSI Empire. And there's no dialogue in it. It's like a trailer for a new CSI episode. Mm-hmm. But it was just a silly little thing that we did for an afternoon. Um, and uh, some people saw that, and they're like, hey, uh, we're getting married. Would you film our wedding? And I'm like, yeah, I'll do your wedding for $200. And someone saw that wedding, and they're like, we, f- yeah, I'll do that wedding for $200. And I started doing some weddings and, and was enjoying it. You enjoyed filming weddings? Yeah. You're a crazy person. It wasn't that bad. And, and I get that crazy a lot. Person. I get that a lot. <laughs> um, and I have really crazy stories from shooting weddings, but, but I was enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And what I really enjoyed uh, was the fact that I was shooting all of this footage and it's essentially a story and then you have to it's like you have to create your own puzzle pieces Mm -hmm. so you don't even know what the puzzle is going to be like at the end and you're creating all the puzzle pieces because i I was it was the editing that i really really enjoyed of the so it was Mm -hmm. creating all these puzzle pieces building this whole puzzle and then having it all done at the end and having you know somebody be really happy about that so i enjoyed that aspect of it you know and the fact that it was a wedding you know i got a free meal and sometimes i got a an open bar tab and it wasn't so bad Mm -hmm. and but it allowed me to make a lot of mistakes and do a lot of things and learn a lot of stuff that um because i didn't go to school for this Mm -hmm. so i learned a lot of things filming weddings and doing that kind of stuff that i i would have uh, i i can't imagine how i would have you know, I would have made a lot of bad mistakes in front of... an opportunity to get your sea legs. Yeah, but I would have screwed up in front of a lot of people that probably would have been really harsh. You know, I could have learned, but maybe not. But, you know, I would have made mistakes on other people's projects. Yeah. Whereas I made mistakes and I learned on my projects. Rachel, how did you get involved in filmmaking? Oh, boy. Um, I started doing uh, cable access... Geez, seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, just And I was just doing it on a volunteer basis after work. I was actually a chef for about 16 years, and I got out of that, and I went into the steel industry for about three years. Well, about three years ago, I got fired. Mm-hmm. And I kind of made the decision that I was going to just, you know, go balls out and do something that I really wanted to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And um, within a couple of weeks of getting fired, I got a job as an assistant director on a horror film that was being shot out in Beaverton. Mm-hmm. And it's just been downhill ever since. <laughs> I, I primarily just do, I prim- primarily love screenwriting. I love to write. Mm-hmm. That's really where my heart is. Mm-hmm. But kind of balancing it out with production is is really making it Gets you more even involved. more enjoyable. I mean, I, I, tell, I tell people every single day that I feel like I'm getting away with something because I love my job so much. Mm-hmm. I really love what I do. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine that I just spent so many years doing something that I absolutely hated, mm-hmm. you know, and now I'm doing something that I absolutely love. And I, it's just, it's a fantastic feeling. 
So you did the 48-hour film festival? Yeah, that was my second one. Your second was, one? Yeah, the second one. What, uh, what genre did you pull? Uh, sci-fi. Sci-fi. Yeah. What genre did you pull the year before? Do you remember? Mm. Oh. Yeah, spy. Spy. <laughs> spy, yes. And and uh, so how, how did it differ from the first year to the second? Uh, the first year I had no idea what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. uh, the second year I did have an idea of what I was getting into, and I was a lot more prepared. Yeah. And you did it anyway. Well, yeah, I did it anyway, <laughs> but I was able to really prepare. I had a massive team on my second one. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a lot of people. Um, who were helping me out, as mm -hmm. opposed to the first one where we were all just kind of like, well, what the hell are we doing? What should we do? Mm -hmm. What should we use for a prop? You know, I mean, <laughs> so it was, the second one was much better. I, c I can honestly say that I'm much, much more proud of how the second one turned out as opposed to the first one. Not to say that the first one was bad, but I think that with the knowledge that I had from the first one, I was able to execute it a little bit better. And what, what was the movie? What was the film? Um, for the second one, the was second under one. the stars. Under the stars. Yeah. And what was it, what was the premise? Um, the premise was um, about a <laughs> about a guy who had a time machine, mm -hmm. and there was um, a transient kind of a, a wayward soul who was trying to steal it from him. And he does he does succeed, but he does not succeed. So it's. Mm -hmm. You should watch it. <laughs> spoilers. No spoilers. We don't want any spoilers here. And Martin, this is the one that you edited? Yeah. And you did a very good job. Yeah, you did a very good job. Yay! <laughs> and we've been friends ever since. That's right. So, looking forward, mm -hmm. the first series is done. Series one is finished. You guys are, have you started filming series two or just started writing it? Not yet. I've written it, and I actually haven't let anybody see it. Rachel, ha Rachel hasn't even nope. seen wow. series two so yet. So you don't even know what's going to happen. No, but we have been side pro sidetracked with other things. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'll let I'll let it slide for a little while. Yeah, because yeah. we we do have a, a film that we're that we're working on for the summer. So that's kind of why series two has been set aside, and mm -hmm. um, and I can talk about it a little bit if you want to. I'd like to hear about both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, where Series 2 is going is uh, people have been trying to find out just what's going on with the infection. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's really going to be about. And we get a, an answer as to what's been going on with the infection. Okay. And I like that the it, it's an infection <coughs> premise and not a supernatural <coughs> You know, zombie mojo. Yeah. Premise, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I and I, because I'm I'm a fan of the forty, uh, the twenty, uh, twenty eight days later, twenty eight weeks later, mm -hmm. um, the Dawn of the Dead remakes. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, it's it's uh, it's runners. almost like it's a uh, yeah. It, it's kind of like uh, you know, are you a new Rush fan or an old Rush fan? And I'm I guess a I'm a new fan. Rush fan. <laughs> I'm a Rush fan, so that's how I was able to draw that little one analogy. My, one of my best friends is a Rush <laughs> fan, so you know that's fine. But nice. Yeah. I'm um, a drummer. How can I not be a Russian? That's fan? fair. That is completely <laughs> fair. I accept that. Yes. Totally. Okay. Um, but yeah, I that's I, I really started falling in love with the with the newer stuff. So um, so yeah, mine's an infection one. I I like the infection stories. I'm mm -hmm. I'm not a, a shuffler fan. I I I like being scared. I, I'm not such a violence guy, but I love being scared. You like I love the psychological thriller. Yes, aspect. and the and the runners really scare me. The fact that they are just this animalistic running, you know, non compromising. Um, I I really love that. So that's the aspect that we've really stuck with. So. Uh, so we get some answers to the origin of, of the virus, mm -hmm. um, and what happens for Series 2 is that um, with finding its origins, we also find that, uh, that there's a scientist that was participating in all this, and that's actually the scientist is referenced in... Nasty in, little scientist. Well, but he was a good scientist. <laughs> he actually didn't agree with what was going on, and, and he's uh, spoken about in Episode mm -hmm. 4, mm -hmm. this Dr. Lanny. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, or Dr. Laney. So, Dr. Laney is this person that has left. Well, he becomes someone that they're after. Mm -hmm. And so, what happens in series two is we come across the military who is part of this whole virus and its origins and what's going on. They're trying to secure the situation that's happening, but at the same time, they're trying to preserve the the virus and what it is whereas this dr laney is trying to end the whole thing so it becomes our group gets entangled between dr laney who is out there with a rogue group of people who are trying to stop the whole virus and stop the spread of it and everything mm -hmm. that's going on the military that's trying to preserve what's going on hmm. and that's going to be the theme for series two series two yes excellent so what's the what's the project that has you guys sidetracked 
That is a film. <laughs> I, I think Rachel should talk about that. Oh one. boy, because <coughs> um, this is her baby. Well, yes. Um, I I wrote a script, mm -hmm. and I've uh, been working on it off and on for quite a few years, and I I. Um, it's kind of a, it's got a dark premise. It's about a female serial killer here in the Northwest. And, nice. um, very nice. I wasn't, I was I mean, not nice. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, not nice. It's not <laughs> nice. But not, yeah. Serial killers are bad, Yeah, but they make for interesting movies. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. And I, I think it's a, it, I've had a lot of really good feedback on the mm -hmm. storyline where it was going. And after I learned how to properly format screenplays, which mm -hmm. was just a couple of years ago, I was able to revisit that particular script mm -hmm. and rework it the way that it really needed to go. And it, it just it turned out fantastic, had really good feedback. I thought, well, do I really want to try and sell this? Um, or do I think I might be able, I think I might be, be able to actually make it. Mm -hmm. And s he's the one who convinced me that we could make it. So. That's what we're doing. We're going to take something that I wrote, and I asked him to direct um, mm -hmm. this particular one. I would like um, him to direct this feature, and then, you know, in the future, we have some other features that I would I would like to direct. But this one, I feel most comfortable with him doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's just been in pre-production ever since. Um, as soon as we finished wrapping on the last stand, I believe we just got on this one right away, and so we've, we've got it all broken down. It's it's just coming along really nicely. What's it called? It's called In My Eyes. In My Eyes. And when does it start filming? Uh, we start shooting July 5th. Wow. Mm -hmm. Soon. Yeah. yeah. It's so soon. I have yeah. a big project coming on July 2nd, so yeah. I'm uh, intimately aware of yeah. how It's coming at you. <laughs> it's yeah. coming at you. So. Uh, you guys can't see producer Morgan, but she's a little freaked out behind the scenes back there because she's a very big part of, of my big project that's coming on July 2nd, and we're not moving quickly enough for her. <laughs> she's a little bossy. She's a little, yeah, she's a little slave driver back there. Mm -hmm. So uh, how long do you think it's going to take to film? I have it slated for 25 shoot days total. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, like I was telling him earlier, I believe that if it turns out that we have any pickup shots, I think we can have it all done and wrapped by the end of August. Like pretty much everything that has to do with film mm -hmm. by the end of August and then have everything in the can. But with that being said, you know how things happen. Correct. Weather happens, you know, problems, accidents, <laughs> things, things. People drive their car off of the side of a road while driving down the wrong road. Okay. <laughs> different, different project. Yeah. <laughs> different kind of project. Thing. Yeah. But the same kind of Bell thing. Bell ringers. Bring um, bells. <laughs> okay. Stay focused. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Audio problem. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that. Later yeah. Later. That's yeah. an inside joke. Um, no, I lost my train of thought. So everything Staying wrapped up 25 days. Yes. For the okay. Shoot, so, but then, but you know how things happen. Right. So then September, I asked, I asked everybody, you know, who's going to apply for the job. We're still doing interviews for uh, casting crew. Mm -hmm. um, to please keep in mind that if we have anything um, extra to do to finish everything out, please kind of keep the idea that we want to use September as kind of like our our leeway. So yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully we can get everything done by the end of August. I'm and is, looking for that. Is this going to be a short film or a feature length? No, this is feature. My yeah, goodness. It's 107 Ambitious pages. and exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm exciting. really excited. It's yeah. a great script. I'm, I'm very happy about it. And how are you going to release it? You know, we are still talking about that mm -hmm. because we have a couple of different ideas, a couple well, of different ways to go. You're mm -hmm. talking about I already know what the answer is. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <coughs> well, my deal for this thing is that um, I'm really trying to, I, I want us to budget to be able to get it on as many screens as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a film festival, when everybody talks about Sundance or Cannes or anything like that, the the only part of those things that are limiting factors is that it's an entry fee. That's mm -hmm. really all it is, is an entry fee. Mm -hmm. You pay the entry fee, you fill out the application, it's going to get in there. Yeah. Um, and that's really what I want is, is for us to just take a chunk of money and just set it aside. And that is our film festival money. Mm -hmm. That's... And uh, to travel to as many of them as we possibly can find the time or afford to do, mm -hmm. um, but stick that on as many so screens as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the entry fees have yep. been budgeted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the the traveling to and fro, um, 
That would be more difficult. But that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Yeah. But actually having that as part of the marketing plan and the distribution plan, yeah. you know, that that has to be a primary goal to include that in your budget. So mm -hmm. we've done that, and but then when when we're talking about actually like you know screening it because I would like to screen it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that that um, I would like to get more numbers on mm -hmm. currently. Yeah, but I, I want it in front of people. I want as many screens, and uh, I've worked on some films for other people where, you know, their plan was, well, you know, we've already got it sold on DVD. You know, it, it's just going to mm -hmm. end up That's on a not DVD exciting. rag. Mm -hmm. That's and, not exciting. You know, and they'll probably do like a local release and get it on a couple of screens here locally mm -hmm. or something like that. And and uh, and I, I'm not I'm not trying to shoot them down for their decision, but when you put that much time and that much effort and that much heart and soul into it, I've I've never I've never found anybody that's like you know what someday I'm going to make movies that go straight to DVD. Like everyone wants no, to make something on a big goal. screen. Yeah, right. that's not the goal. Right. Exactly. So I I just uh, you know I I think doing everything you can to just get that on as even if you got to hand that thing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, and really quickly. I just want to add to that, that, you know, you're making a very good point. I, I find when you're watching a movie, there's a huge difference between watching it on a, on a television screen mm -hmm. and watching it in a theater. There is. I mean, there's just, there's no way to describe that you're actually in the movie when it's like this, when it's like surrounding you. You're mm -hmm. actually in the movie. And so your interpretation <coughs> of that movie is totally different than sitting in front of a television. Yeah. I mean... I, I would say that's that's my opinion, but I believe there's actual studies on that. So <laughs> <laughs> there probably, I mean, there's a reason that the, you know box office numbers are the way that they are. Right. I mean, you know, usually people rent things. Uh, I rent things on DVD because I don't like movie theaters. Mm -hmm. I like going to the movies. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't like movie. I like local. Like Completely we have a movie agree. theater down the street that I love to go to. Yeah. Because it's a local, independently owned theater, mm -hmm. and it's you know not you know full of commercials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um. That's my own personal thing. Those are my issues. <laughs> I don't put them on you. Um, but those are great things. Yeah. That's something to be very proud of because not very many places have those. I grew up in Portland a town that didn't them. have any theaters. We, yeah. I didn't have a movie theater growing up. We have we have, we have have local theaters in mm -hmm. Portland still, and there are a lot of towns that do not have that. So you guys have to do like a big red carpet Portland Oh, we definitely want yes, to. Yes, you have to. We're, we're, I want to do that for The Last Stand, actually. To, to close out uh, Series 1, mm -hmm. uh, I've mashed them all together in one right now, mm -hmm. and I would love to rent uh, one of the local theaters like that around here and just and just do a showing and have like $3 at the door and What's bring everybody What's the length when you, when you string them all together? Uh, 40 minutes without credits. You should. Yeah. No, I, I want go? to. It's a, it's Just a, don't do it on a Friday because uh, I, I, I work go. on Fridays. <laughs> No, it w it's a it's a matter of funding it right now. Yeah. That's about it. You know, it's like everything else is a part of this. Exactly. That's the difficult thing with all the stuff with the stuff that we do with the stuff mm -hmm. that you do. It's all about funding. Mm -hmm. Yep. It makes it very difficult to do your job and do your job well. Yeah. And you're trying to do something that you love, which makes it even more frustrating. But it can be done. It yes, can, it be. can be done. We have found huge ways around that, and that's something that we're I'm I feel very fortunate about mm -hmm. and I think Rachel does Absolutely. too because mm -hmm. we've when I got here I really um I never thought I was going to be a director the intention of doing anything like this was not mine mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be a, a camera guy or, a, or an editor mm -hmm. and I was doing a lot of work for other people and I was so frustrated by not getting enough work or always waiting and uh, I feel like Morgan it's like Th this is not moving fast enough. There is not mm -hmm. enough stuff going on. And finally, I just said, I, I have control issues. Mm -hmm. And I was putting the control and the trust and the faith in other people. And I just kind of said, no, that's not going to happen anymore. And that's when all of this stuff started to happen, where I just said, no, I'm going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people struggling to, you know, get dollars to pay for things and all of that. And um, when, when we sat and talked about this and we said, we're going to do this, and she signed on... It was just like, you know, this is going to happen. Uh, I don't know how it's going to happen. Sell my motorcycle, do whatever right. it is. You know, right. it's just, yeah. th it's going to happen. You just yeah. do it. And we just did it. That, I find really it interesting it that the film community is not so much unlike the startup community in Portland, mm -hmm. um, where there's not necessarily enough investors to make what needs to be happening happening, but people manage to bootstrap it and make it happen anyway. <clears throat> well, we have to. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't be doing anything. <laughs> exactly. And honestly, if I had to compromise, 
I would rather make something for nothing and try my damnedest mm-hmm. than, you know, not make anything at all, you know, because yeah. that's, that's the only, I mean, if, with the last stand, I mean, you know how hard it is that we've, that we've mm-hmm. worked to actually make this happen and we've barely spent any money yeah. for all intents and purposes. Mm-hmm. So we've had to ask friends, we've had to, um, and we've, done a we've lot had to pilfer garage sales, we've had yeah. to, you know. Didn't Chuck dig something out of a dumpster for us? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was <laughs> it was insane. Yeah. No, it was insane. It was. But it worked, and it we was. did it. And, and it's good. Did, but we also did a lot of work ourselves. You know, we did... Uh, there's there's not a lot of directors... You know, when I've talked with people or seen what they're doing, like they're trying to hire this person or that person. But um, so, so I wrote, and then she helped me with the script, and then I directed. She assistant directed, but she also was running budgets and schedules and mm-hmm. everything like that. Mm-hmm. And she was running the clapboard on things, helping with promotion. I've just promoted the holy heck out yeah. of this thing as much as I can. Yeah. But I also edited, did the sound design, ran the camera. I didn't have a cameraman. I ran the camera. Mm-hmm. I didn't have audio guys doing it. I did all the audio. So, um, so the audio didn't work at all. Uh, in the in the field, the field audio stuff was was I actually had people brought in for that, but like the okay. sound design of like all the special effects and the foley mm-hmm. work and everything like that, I did all of that. Okay. Yeah. And then we had a music guy. Yeah, no, the field the field audio, no, I, I don't know, I don't know who you pissed off. Oh my god. I don't know. Okay, so I want you really quick. Uh, it's a website, Twitter accounts, all the do the do the promo. Go, go, go. Okay, so oh, okay. by pushing ourselves, <laughs> yes. we are yourselves, uh, please, at thelaststandonline.com is where you can find uh, the web series. Uh, you can also find it on MySpace, on Twitter. I am Galaxy underscore Sailor, uh, and I tweet about it all the time as well Facebook. as other things. Uh, Facebook, we do have a Facebook fan page. It's the Last Stand Facebook fan page. Uh, we have nearly 800 fans on there, which I'm pretty happy about. I think only half of them are friends that have never watched it, <laughs> um, <laughs> as most fan pages are on there. Uh, Rachel is also on Twitter and Twitter's things out. She mm-hmm. is Miss Monster Film on there. And yeah, we are our own promotion machine. Mm-hmm. And we have t shirts and bumper stickers available. T shirts are $15 and that's delivered within uh, the United States, not by hand, by mail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're me. Yeah. My shirt was just delivered. Then they're delivered by hand. My shirt was delivered. It's on my dining That's room right. table. You you can see the shirt on Mean PDX next week. That's right. Just saying. I, for no, two two birds, one stone. Last stand, Mean PDX. Promote it all at once. <laughs> just get it all. There out were of the privileges way. that came with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? And then we can move on to other things. Sure. Well, um, like you know, audio jinxes and. And stormtroopers. That's yeah. I think that's that's it for the last. Let, time. Let's hit the audio audio jinx. Let's let's audio yeah. Audio no, I, that, I I'm just tickled audio. pink that that I'd like you to know hear about our life was failures. a living hell for. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you become audio cursed, Martin? I don't know how it became. I've lived a very good, clean, healthy life. <laughs> oh jeez. I never believe anyone that says I'm an, that. I'm an honest, true person that has that has rarely messed up. So I, this is not a deserving <laughs> thing. <laughs> so um, get your audio screwed. Yeah, I mm-hmm. yeah I I totally yeah the audio was um, this isn't mean PDX so I know I can I, the audio was fucked. It yeah, was, oh yeah, you can say whatever you want. It, it, it was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. It, it really was like if there is a god, he was just like, Neh. we don't like you. Yeah, I've, and <laughs> I've, like, I've never known anybody to have so many. Let problems. me show you my platypus humor now. <laughs> Platypus. Um, what are we doing with that? Yeah. Come on. The platypus? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Useless. All right. So but humorous. Yes, um, but funny. Well, when we so when we got everything back together again for everything, um, I used to live down in Ashland. I moved here a year and a half ago from Ashland. So were you always in Ashland? Uh, I lived in Ashland for about 12 years. I grew up in eastern Oregon. I've been in Oregon all my so life. So you're an Oregonian. I consider myself an Oregonian. I'm. Uh, my family moved here when I was about three months old from you, Wyoming. You can consider yourself yeah. an Oregonian. Yeah, and I'm 39, so I it's mean... Fair. 38 and and yeah nine yeah. months something yeah. so that's fair you can you can say you're an oregonian yeah thanks I'm glad I, I'm, I, I'm I won't included. let you she I'm, will but i won't let I'm you from california and texas so yeah <laughs> yeah california mm. and texas how could it get worse right <laughs> 
I know. So were you sad. a are you a machine that we don't know about? Like you're from two different part warehouses or I was born <laughs> in California mm -hmm. and then I moved to Texas when I was a small child and lived there for my formative speech years and then I moved back to California and then the first place I ever chose to live was Oregon. I moved here when I was seventeen. Oh nice. Yeah. Very cool. But we're talking about your audio problems. That's true, the audio problems. So, you try to get out of it, but uh, I can No, it's a good story. So we, we finally get everything going for episode two. And I used to live down in Ashland. Mm -hmm. I had a, a buddy who worked for the Shakespeare Festival down there. He mm -hmm. found out about what was going on. He's like, hey, man, um, you know, I'm... I, I'm doing audio on the side. I got a buddy down here where, you know, when you're ready to jump into the pro leagues, let me know. Mm -hmm. So we're getting everyone together and I pull him in to do our field audio. So he's running the boom and the mic. Mm -hmm. So it's shooting episode two. We're in Forest Park. Um, we're directly across the Willamette River from where we shot episode one. So story wise, we're geographically in the right spot. Mm -hmm. um, we go to start filming and I go up there all the time and I had been up to this spot many times. So we get up there, and this day, everything that could have happened did. And it was all the things that I was checking to make sure weren't going to happen, and they did. Mm -hmm. So we're up there walking, and we're shooting this stuff. Um, there's a, the, the freight yards, the, the rail yards. Yeah. They were... Uh, 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 crashing cars. They, yeah, they were crashing cars. They were basically they were connecting cars mm -hmm. that day. So you would hear, like, the engine rev up and they have and then you'd hear boom 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 mm -hmm. boom boom with them slamming into these cars for hours that was going on um guys in jet boats were going by uh old world war ii and korean guys that were like bombardier pilots were out you know revisiting <laughs> missions out there on forest park yeah just like flying down over and then don't forget really. the guy in oh the... i haven't forgotten yet okay um there's the dump truck that <laughs> that backed up for as near as three we hours. can tell, three to four hours. <laughs> three hours. He just backed <laughs> beep, up. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> he just kept backing up. So all of that has gone on. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we've had all sorts of other little issues, but those were the big ones that were going on. So we, we've, we've whittled our way through most of the script. Uh, one of our lead actors, a new character that was being introduced into this day, it was his first day of shooting. He went down the wrong road. He got lost, went down the wrong road, tried to turn around on a gravel road, went off the shoulder, slid his car off the road, and pinned it against a tree. So now we've got a no-show for our character. <laughs> so we're having so I'm having to like readjust the script on how it's going to work for him cuz mm -hmm. he ain't coming back. Yeah. Um in fact we we lost two people to go out to try to go find him. <laughs> so we're doing all of this, we're setting up for a shot. It's our first actual zombies cuz episode 1 didn't have any cuz no, I didn't have didn't. enough people. They didn't I didn't have, have no, I, I didn't that have was enough the people. one thing I noted when I watched episode 1 I was like there's not a single zombie in the zombie film. There's sounds of them all over the place but I didn't have enough people. Mm -hmm. So uh so episode 2 is like finally we're going to have zombies in this one. I'm promoting the fact that there's going to be zombies in this one. We're about to shoot the zombie stuff. And one of our guys who is a zombie coming up in the scene, he's all in makeup and he walks down. He's like, hey, there's some hikers that want to come through and we're trying to finish this out. And I'm like, 20 minutes, man. Just ask him. Just say like 15, 20 minutes. Let us finish this and we'll get it done. So we're trying to shoot and get it done. zombie makeup on the hikers. It, and <laughs> It would have seemed odd. Well, they <laughs> almost became zombies. It's so, hey, this gets better. So, <laughs> and, and 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 we've got a bunch of people staging. So this guy is with the group that's staging, and it's a couple of guys in zombie makeup, but it's also a couple of guys with fake, the very real looking, but not real machine gun gear and mm -hmm. hard, you know, all this hardware and all this. So they're all waiting. Well, so we're trying to finish this shoot, and they don't wait. They come through anyway, and they come through on the trail, and they stop about 20 feet above us. So we kind of get everything f uh, finished up. We're getting everything set for the next shot, and we see the hikers up above us on the trail about 20, 30 feet up the hill, and I'm, I'm looking up at them, and they're, then they're watching us, but they start doing this, and I, and I lean over to Rachel, and I'm like, Rachel, are they putting blindfolds on? And she looks up the hill, and she's like, yeah, I, I think they are. But they start putting these blindfolds on. I'm just like, whatever, I can't worry what about this. The? Yeah, exactly. So I'm just like, what the hell's going on here? I can't worry about them. So we start getting ready for the shot. We're getting everything all lined up. I got the camera. We've had all the stuff. And we're, we're really close. Like, it's about to happen. And I hear, ding! This long, resonating, brassy ding. And I look up the hill, and here's four blindfolded people on the trail, and this person about 50 feet up ahead of them on the trail with these two brass bells. <laughs> and I look at them, and I watch, 
and they go ding and then the four people take one step and then they wait and then the person ding and they take one step and wait and I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me! And I threw my <laughs> camera down and ripped the headphones off. Me. <laughs> These people, it, they, it was 300 yards up the hill that way. Wow. One little step at a time. What all the, the way hell up. were they it's doing? It's a Zen Buddhist thing where you're you're basically trusting. <laughs> you're trusting. You're trusting. You're, you're hiking. You're trusting the, the sound. <laughs> you're trusting the sound and that the earth will meet your foot and you know you'll be able to go where you need to go without having to use the sense of your eyes. Yeah. And I don't necessarily agree with it, so don't look at me like that, okay? That's just what they were doing. <laughs> and that was my long-standing joke. Every time that we were going to do something, I was like, yeah, as long as no Tibetan bell-ringing blindfolded monks decide to start, you know, using chimes out here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, audio failure for the win. So, and finally, they made their way up and over. But, I mean, this is Forest Park. Yeah. Forest Park is 28 linear air miles of space. Mm -hmm. And they picked this one spot. And we weren't even on a major trail. We were off. This mm -hmm. was an off area. But, mm -hmm. Martin, it wasn't just this, though. It was every single shoot was, that we went on. Every, every single shoot, there had to have been, you know, like, you know, car accidents, sirens, trains, airplanes. Yeah. And I don't know what it is with the airplanes. He's got, like, you know, the what, the World War One aircraft circling around. I mean, I don't know what the and hell's the, going on with you. And the jet skis. Remember the jet skis on the Jesus Willamette, too? There was guys there are out no on... jet skis in post-apocalyptic times. No, there's you've got not. A and there would be... It's like, do you guys know this is a super fun site? And they're out there... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who's operating those trains? <laughs> We've got you no know, zombie train train yeah, operators. Yeah, no, they're uh, they're you know robotic trains that long standing programming or something. <laughs> right, know. right. Something, something's going. Because we with thought ahead trains. for yeah. the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> exactly. We were afraid there'd be a zombie apocalypse. We wanted to be able to still move things like beer. Yeah, right. So right. beer for the survivors. <laughs> yeah. No. That's thin. <laughs> that was really thin. Oh, look, they've got the website up. But we're about oh, to talk about excellent. something completely different. And that must be episode four, because that's got the uh, teasers of three in it. Yeah, that's episode four. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say something about the uh, part of the music in episode four, if I can, since yeah. this is, if, if you guys see episode four, this opens with a music track right here. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, this song that plays on here, but then the the song that plays for our credits is is uh, it's written and performed by a guy named Tom Shear, mm -hmm. and as a as a band as a performance, he's known as Assemblage Twenty Three. Mm -hmm. Um, he's in Seattle. Oh, Morgan's very excited. Oh, they're they're fantastic. Well, he's you, fantastic. You can you can talk, Morgan. What's what's the issue there? I've heard of him. Oh, you've heard of them? Yeah. I thought you had something more exciting um, to say like, than and, that. And uh, <laughs> if people know VNV Nation, VNV Nation is very similar, or uh, uh, Wolfsheim, mm -hmm. uh, Sh Spangle is a, a little bit, but... Um, You're saying words that don't make sense. You just spell things for people. He just <laughs> makes <laughs> shit up. He doesn't like this kind of music. It's oh, is uh, it music that I don't like? It's the kind of music that she claims to not like. Uh, underground are electronica not, are dance about electronica? music. Electronica. It depends because the stuff that I thought was electronica, I clearly didn't like. But then I have a couple of friends that really like electronica, and when they make me listen to the electronica, then I think I like it. And then I go over to Mugasha and I listen to stuff, and then I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. So it just depends on where I'm hearing it. Well, I would. I, would I don't ask. like electronica. Stop <laughs> it. Well, if you like the credits, if you listen to the music to the credits and you like it, then I like um, electronica. That's, well, you don't like electronica. I mean, it's as vi it's like saying I like pop music. Well, how many? I don't like pop music. Yeah. So how much stuff is in I pop? I like Tom or... Waits. I like Nick Cave. Oh, Nick Cave, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, so Assemblage Twenty Three. Uh, when I first did this whole thing before it was the series with Episode One, I mm -hmm. just liked that song and it fit yeah. for what became Episode One. So I used it. Mm -hmm. When the whole thing took off, I knew did that you I know was going to be no. Okay. I knew I was going to be in violation of stuff. So when episode when we started to, to get it all together, I just went to the website of Assemblage Twenty Three and it had a contact. And I'm like, well, whatever. I'll just throw it out there. So I contacted, I sent an email, and I explained the whole situation. Mm -hmm. The next day, I got an email back from the guy, from Tom Shear, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, absolutely, I have absolutely no problem with this, oh, this is great. Did you see that, how yeah, the, the typing, the yeah. Was, he's I big was, into gestures. I, mm -hmm. I am, yeah, I'm one of those guys, if you... I'm, if I'm you, a hand talker, if too. You yeah, yeah, yeah. If you tie my hands up, I'd shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But yeah, he wrote me back and, and said, this is great. He's like, I like it. It's fine. You guys can go for it. Nice. If you make money, we'll have to work out a new deal. But as far as long as you're not making any money on this right now, go for it. It's nice. all yours. Very and nice. he's done that on it. We've used three of his songs now mm-hmm. on his stuff. And he's on tour. He's uh, or he's going to be. Um, he just got done with a European tour. He's in Seattle. Mm-hmm. He's kicking off his North American tour in Seattle on uh, uh, March 29th. He's in very Portland soon. March 30th. Mm-hmm. Oh, very soon. We're presenting him with Last Stand yes. shirts. Nice. Yes. We, we will be so, there. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah we, we, I've, we've had a very good long-standing series of conversations with him. He's really great and very supportive, and he watches the episodes. And So, yeah, we're going to be hanging out with him on March 30th. Very, very cool. Where's his show? I believe it's at Dante's, if okay. I remember right. Dante's downtown on Burnside. Yeah. Go forth. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. Where Zambatica was. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's talk about stormtroopers. All right. Okay. This, this, this one I'm going to have to sit back and just watch Rachel's you both talk. Sit out. Sorry, I, I don't so, know much about it. My second favorite thing to talk about. When we did 30 Hour Day One, I had just gotten in contact with Martin on the Twitters, and he suggested that we might need some stormtroopers to come down. But things happened so quickly with 30 Hour Day that it just kind of went by the wayside, and I very sadly had no stormtroopers. <laughs> it was sad. I had two Santas. Two Santas. In fact, if I remember right, Zero stormtroopers. you wanted to sit on the lap of a stormtrooper. That became like your new goal. Yes, I wanted, to, exactly. My goal <laughs> was to have a photo taken with me sitting on a stormtrooper's lap. That's mm-hmm. what I needed to have. It didn't happen, people. <laughs> it didn't happen. And it didn't happen. And you want to know the reason we're doing 30 hour day two? Is so that I can sit on a stormtrooper's lap. <laughs> no. It's not. It's so that we can ma- raise money for some very uh, worthy nonprofit organizations that, that need help and, and we can be proud of. But I'm going to get to sit on a stormtrooper's lap this time. <laughs> right, Martin? It is going to happen. Yeah? They're yeah. going to be able to sit in a chair with it all that. It was ready to happen. I I uh, sat in my apartment in my stormtrooper gear, like with a little tear, watching 30-hour so workday live. Just I'm like so sad. <sighs> I'm so sad. I can't be there right now. How many stormtroopers am I going to have for 30 hour day two? How many do you need? Morgan, how many stormtroopers do I need? I need a lot of stormtroopers. Oh, Morgan 10? Wants 10. Oh, we can get 10. And, okay. and I'll get you a Vader and a Boba Fett, maybe <gasps> even a Wookiee. Oh, I want to on Boba Fett's lap, too. <laughs> oh, wait. I like Star Wars a little bit. Yeah. Just a little. I'm kind of way freakish about my... Just a little. I caught the fact that you quoted Star Wars a little while ago, and yeah. inside I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a little warm and fuzzy? You were a little excited. I was a little happy. Yeah. I should... We don't have time right now. I should show you my 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 figures, my action figures. I have a bunch of original in a... You know the Darth Vader head case? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's out there with a bunch of original action figures. I have I have They're many beautiful. boxes of toys, and yeah. I have many out on display. Most yeah. of my action yes. figures were eaten by animals, <laughs> and my brother, who liked to destroy things because he was a rat bastard. Yikes. I love you, Maddie. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm glad you're getting married. Yay. Don't break my toys. Um, yeah, brothers are mean. Well, and because I do the armor thing, I actually have a helmet collection, so... Um, I have a I have a full Darth Vader that I want to have on a mannequin someday, but I have, have a Darth, a Vader, Darth Vader, helmet. Vader helmet. Nice. Yeah. I Probably think, the I'm Ruby Supreme Normal, Deluxe. I'm wondering if Doctor Norman wants to go get it. Yeah. Is that what he's doing, Morgan? It sounds like it. It sounds like he's or getting, getting drumsticks. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I've got a couple of different. Uh, I've got. Uh, the phase uh, phase two clone <gasps> troopers. He's bringing and my 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 case and the Darth nice. Vader helmet. Thank you, Dr. Normal. Look at that. Oh, that one is the, uh, that's the one that you get at Disneyland. That's the Disneyland ride one. It's the... That's not the size ac- accurate one. No, it's not. <laughs> it's it's too Post. big for me. It's the Don Post build. From yeah. The 80. <laughs> yeah. I'm like 80. one. Dude, I don't, it doesn't stay upright. I don't wear this thing. I'm more, yeah, there. Well, David Prowse was a little taller. Nice. Those are good cases, too. I never had one of those cases. So the, the dirty little secret about this case is that my friend Chad, uh, when he was... Hey. What? 
No, not Chad Bader. <laughs> Chad Sniffin. <laughs> Chad Bader. Women's rights activist right. Chad Sniffin, not Chad Bader. Completely different person. <laughs> um, when Night he was, shift manager. When he was getting rid of all his worldly goods for some reason, he decided that I should have his Star Wars Darth Vader head. And he Oh, oh and that's there's the, the one spillage. problem with the Darth yeah. Vader head is that no one stays. <laughs> yep. No one stays the way that they're supposed to be. So these were actually his action figures because most of mine were destroyed by dogs and my brother. You'd think a brother would be more respectful. Yeah, but Return yeah, of the Jedi, Luke. Mm -hmm. That is an Empire Strikes Back Chewie, I do believe. The Lando. I like someone to come in and appreciate my toys. 3PO. That's oh, good. I'm. I have piles of them. Now, which 3PO is this? Is this the... This is the 1977 3PO, I do believe, because he doesn't have the you know, silver it's really leg. sad is my little R2-D2 is all naked. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He's all R2 destroyed. lost his sticker. Poor little R2. The Gamorrean. You've got Snow Trooper. Is that Snow Trooper Luke? Yep, that's Hoth Luke and Tatooine Luke. Nice. That's an original yeah, Hey, the nerd Trooper. runs strong in this one. You don't, you don't have to yeah. tell me. I know. Yeah. I have a uh, I have an original Boba Fett that is uh, pre Empire Strikes Back. Nice. Very coveted. <laughs> Very nice. Where's my little door? My stuff. Yeah. Oh, those are the hard ones to keep a hold of. Yeah, that's what. That's the part. I just kind of keep them all locked in there, and it's yeah. difficult for me because I'm a parent and mm -hmm. I have a daughter, and she uh she's not allowed to watch the new Star Wars movies. Because they suck. Because they suck. <laughs> exactly. She has seen episode one because my mother insisted that she be allowed to see Jar Jar Binks. I objected. Oh, most annoying character Thank ever. You. Thank oh you. Oh, my God. But she's a big fan of the original three Star Wars movies, and she always wants to play with my Star Wars figures. And I'm kind of like, they're toys. They're yep. meant to be played with. Uh-huh. Under very close supervision when your hands are clean and you're on the table. That's right. And they don't actually touch your hands. <laughs> right. And you're in a bubble. Yeah, yeah. you use your imagination <laughs> with breathing to apparatus. move them around. Yeah, no, I, I do let her play with my action figures because she's not like my brother and she doesn't try to burn things. Yeah, I have display cases of, of characters mm -hmm. and, and helmets and, and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. But I have more than just the Star Wars, but mostly Star Wars. Halo 2, you said? Um, I have some Halo ones. I actually I haven't played the games very much. I'm I'm an armor guy, so I mm -hmm. have a Master Chief armor set that I built. Mm -hmm. um, I have an Are episode you three. About Halo? <laughs> just saying. It's a video game. That's all you need to know. Yeah, I just heard you say it earlier, and my brain uh, recognizes geek terms mm -hmm. and pulls them in. Recognizes that is like doot, doot, doot. Yep. Yeah. Nerdy. Yeah. You can encompass this. <laughs> yeah. It fits. Um, but yeah, I've got, uh, I have uh, the Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. I have a, a, a clone trooper that has, I can rotate helmets through, but it's actually an airborne clone trooper from mm -hmm. episode three. Mm -hmm. I did a, uh, a Commander Cody from episode three, but I sold it a couple of years ago so I could go to Celebration 3, mm -hmm. which was on the 30th anniversary of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So um, I have you a. You know how I know when the 30th anniversary of Star Wars was? The year I was born. Nice. Just saying. Good year. 30th Can't birthday. Make ass. And Star Wars. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. That is good, but <laughs> I was six in 77, so I, I actually so got to stand in line it. and watch it. You yeah. can enjoy it. The first one I actually got to watch was mm -hmm. uh, episode, episode, but I can't, they reordered them four, five, six. Yeah. Four, yeah, six. Yeah, you saw six yeah, then. I saw six. You'd be old enough, too. Yeah. Sad. Nice. Yeah, I got to Sad see it in me. the theater, so it was cool. Yeah. Morgan is pointing and I got to see the emoting. Movie. Yeah. Nice. In the theater. Yeah. I beat my brother out for it. <laughs> you beat your brother out? Only one of you got to go? Well, he was two. God, you're not very nice. No, not for Star Wars. He was easy to take, though, too. I, I mean, that's easy. totally... I took him down. Gotta, like take a, gotta take advantage of that. So when you dress up with your Stormtrooper friends, what's, mm -hmm. what's it called? So the whole international group is called the 501st Legion. Okay. Uh, it was started by a guy who um, he'd been in a car accident, lost his leg, uh, mm -hmm. lost his job, and uh, his daughter was diagnosed with uh, a terminal disease. He had a very bad time. He was having a very bad time, and, and his wife at the time was like, honey, you need to do something to get you out of the dumps. Yeah. You know, you need to do something. And uh, there were starting to be some people that were out there building stormtrooper gear, whatnot. He and he had some. Uh, his name is Albin. 
uh, and he lives on the East Coast. And so what he did is uh, he got a bunch of people together that he had been meeting at different cons and said, we should we should do this. We should get together, mm -hmm. make a group of this, and let's do something cool with it. Let's raise money for um, charity organizations, mostly children's hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of started being that everybody who was doing Star Wars costumes kind of got wind of this and started coming together collaboratively with him. Mm -hmm. So he started this whole thing, and it was just a start of just a group. And then it, and he gave it a name, the 501st. Um, and but people were spread out, so he started drawing lines and saying, "Well, you know, there's an East Coast garrison and a West Coast garrison." Yeah. But then it just grew to where there's now a garrison in every state, mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, there's garrisons all over the country. And to be a garrison with the group wise now with all the organization to it, because I think there's about eight thousand members worldwide. So you have to have twenty five people or more to be a garrison. Mm -hmm. You can be a squad, which is 15, and you can be an outpost, which is five. So what does Portland have? Uh, Portland has a garrison. When I joined on, we were considered an outpost. Mm -hmm. There was only a couple of us. Um, so I, I came on, and, and uh, uh, in the short time that I had, had started, we, had, we got squad status, and we were squad for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few years ago... Um, I actually was, I was the nerd king. I was the... <laughs> nerd king, yay! <laughs> yeah, nothing like being the head honcho of, you know, of the nerd hacienda. But, uh, yeah, so I was the squad leader that year, and I got us to garrison status. I got us over our 25 members at that point in time, and um, so I was happy to say that I was the first garrison commander for the Cloud City Garrison for Portland. How many How many members do you have now? I think there's probably around 60 people. Why did you say 10, Morgan? I need way more than 10 stormtroopers. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, ten, I mean, 10's a good number to go for because you figure you've got people that they have jobs, they have families and kids, and they have obligations and all of this stuff. And um, so it's, it's really hard. Like... Our big one is uh, Starlight Parade. We, we've done, I think, mm -hmm. Starlight Parade for like the last five or six years. And mm -hmm. that one, usually we get like 50, 60 people. Mm -hmm. But people come down from Seattle for that one. Yeah. Typically, you know, you get 10, 10, 12 people for an event. You're doing pretty good. Give me 12. I want 12. I'm going to try to get you 12. Okay. Do your best. Give me 12. July. Are we doing it on Friday or Saturday? I think we should do it Saturday. Yeah. So on Saturday, July 3rd. Mm-hmm. 12 stormtroopers. I know it's the day before the 4th of July, but it's for a good cause. It's for three good causes. <laughs> That's two days before our, sh our first shoot day. It is. Yeah. Yep. They're trying me. It's a test. Is it a test? Yeah. As long as no audio is involved, the universe there will won't be hate no, me. You won't have to do the audio. <laughs> do That's not right. bring a microphone yeah. near him. Yeah, don't I'll even... I'll have my microphone on. Yeah. Will that count? I, I don't, if I just I, I don't wrap know. it? <laughs> Saran wrap me and then put me in the bring armor. a backup, okay? Just bring a backup okay, and, ma and maybe a boom. I need it. I need a backup <laughs> mic and a boom, please. Okay. We didn't have a boom mic for thirty hour day last time. We just had a ton of individual mics. You'll yeah, want you might just yeah, yeah, just make sure just that there is just so one like in the back in the corner or something. Just, or Martin, just, just in case. The yeah, please don't yeah. hurt anybody. I'm more worried about the plane that's going to dive bomb the house because a boom mic has been extended in here because that's what'll happen. Oh, I'm just well, waiting. I'm just waiting for that. Day will not be happening in the house. It's going to be happening in Port Pioneer Courthouse Square. Oh, oh, okay. Excellent. Well, then there yeah. will be a dump truck backing up for three hours straight. Yes, there will be. Trust Whoa. me. Yeah. Trust There'll me. be one of those uh, little trash can drummers down there. Oh yeah. That yeah. Guy will probably be recording <laughs> his right. first live album. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> All right, well, we are closing in on one hour, so why don't you guys go ahead and promote your Twitter accounts again, promote the site for The Last Stand Online. Okay. Anything upcoming that you want people to know about, now's the time to do it. Excellent. Well, um, I want to give the Twitter accounts first. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter. I am Galaxy underscore Sailor. Oh, look, Morgan's got it up on the under on the Excellent. lower third. Thank As you, you can Morgan. See here. Um, <laughs> so you can find me there on Twitter, and there's also a Facebook fan page. Uh, okay, which we'll put mine's up there. Oh yeah. Oh, and uh, now Miss Monster Film. film. That is moi. <laughs> yes. So Miss Monster Film is there, but the website is thelaststandonline.com, and 
please go to the website, check it out. You can watch it for free. You can buy a t-shirt on there, which helps the production of this continue to go on, and it also helps us in advertisement, but you don't have to buy one. You can go and watch for free. All of this stuff is very free for you to participate on. Send it out to your friends, pass it on, check it out, and if you like it, you know, help us out in any way you can. Tweet about it. Tell people to join the Facebook page. Which is it? Do you have the the is it Facebook slash uh, the last the stand? The last stand. Yeah. Okay. If you actually in a, in the search window on Facebook, if you type in the last stand, it's the only the last okay. stand. Very good. Oh, yeah. You can bring me the t-shirt. I'm gonna wear it on the show. Oh, that's uh, right. I'm gonna wear it on the show and, next and week. And you'll be fact. Yes. Fight, eat, kill, die. Mm-hmm. Wait, where's my what camera? Uh, <laughs> I'm confused. What camera do I freaking have? What? Could oh, be anyone. It's their camera. There the last you end, go. Fight, eat, kill, die. That's not. That's our tagline. Really the last stand on there you go. Home. There you go. So yeah, I'll just sit like this. It looks like I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'll just sit like this I for the rest of the show. This is after hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I needed a second martini for this. I really did for this kind of thing. All right. So uh, Facebook, it's on MySpace as well, but you should really just go to the website, which is thelaststandonline.com. Thank you, Martin and Rachel, so much for Thanks joining us tonight. It was an awesome time. Thank I, you very much. I appreciate it. I, I, it was I a lot of fun. These, yeah, these local things are really great. The people that have helped us and supported us like you guys is just awesome. Yeah. We wouldn't so be thank here for you. this. So. Thank Portland. You. It's all Portland, baby. It's all Portland. And it's it's so amazing when you find other people who are doing cool stuff in Portland and you can and you can find a way to be a part of that. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Let's say good night to everybody. Good night everyone. Good night everyone. Have good a great night. weekend. Sleep well. Yeah, I know Dream I might. Zombies. Yep. <laughs> eating you. <laughs> zombies eat you even if even if it's viral, they still eat you. That's yeah, right. it's not just brains. And they run. They run brains. after you. Yeah, no, these are not the... Yeah, no shufflers. Right. Yeah. We've got runners. Runners, yeah. yeah. And none of them say brains. Brains. No talking yeah. zombies. No, no. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. You know, I can never tell when Morgan cuts the sound off. So I'm just babbling. That's what I do. <laughs> it's really for her entertainment at this point. It is. That's, she that's, finds it entertaining. Yeah. She, and she never tells me. She just lets me talk and talk. And I've noticed that when I've watched it, I'm like, I don't think they know that the credits are rolling. They're just yeah, kind of still happening. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't.